Dajia hao, apa kaba, and hello everyone. My name is Dian, and I am very happy to be here today. I am here today to share with you what I have learned so far in life. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I was very blessed to be born into a life of privilege. My dad had worked really hard to be where he is today, and I'm very grateful for him for giving me a good life. But being the boss's daughter wasn't for me. I wanted something of my own, and I wanted to be as independent as possible. So at the age of 22, I started a property development company with the help of my husband and a group of investors who was brave enough to invest in a 20-year-old girl who had dreamed to build homes for urbanites. Fast forward a decade, the Clearwater Group have since built and completed and sold 450 million worth of properties. And along the way, I also got married and have three kids. I love this picture of them because they do drive me crazy from time to time. It's a true story. But I'm not here today to talk to you about property development or to tell you how I juggle my career and being a mother. But what I'm here today, my intention is to share with you what I have learned so far as a simple human being. At the age of 32, I seemed to be living the perfect life. I had a beautiful family, a loving husband, a career that was monetarily really re rewarding, but the deepest part of me was not fulfilled. And I was still in search for what does this life mean? I decided to join a yoga teacher training, not to find out what does life mean, but thinking that I could lose some weight and maybe learn how to do a headstand. But none of that happened during my teacher training, but instead, I found what I call a healthy ever after. A healthy ever after is a roadmap to living an awakened life. It's about returning yourself to wholeness. It's about embracing who you truly are and living your life from a point of consciousness. It's not like the story, we all know what a happily ever after is. It's you meeting Prince Charming or a beautiful princess, and then your life becomes complete. Healthy ever after does not require a prince or a princess. All you need is you showing up. So let me tell you what my journey is about and what I have learned. Number one, our time on earth is brief. There are two things in life that is absolutely certain. Number one is paying taxes. Number two is death. We will die eventually. And to appreciate and to know that our time is brief, we have to look at our existence from a grand scheme of things. This is us, that little dot, that pale blue dot that is in the middle of the galaxy. Earth has been around for 4,600 billion years. I don't know how to wrap around my head around that number, but it has been a long, long time. And our species, Homo sapiens, we have only been around for 200,000 years, which is, if you look at this chart, from the life, from the beginning of Earth, to the first life, which is we were all from water, we all came from water. We were a single cell organism, and then we slowly evolved through eons and millions and billions of years. We evolved to what we are today, and our timeline and average human lifespan is only 79 years. It's not even a dot. I tried putting a dot, but it doesn't work out because it is so 
special and so tiny. And the fact that if you think about how we are created from our mother's egg and our father's sperm, embryologically speaking, when we are in our mother's womb, we know how to grow from a cell into billions of cells into what we are today. Now, we humans didn't invent that process. It is the intelligence of life that is already encoded in that cell. So to know that our life is brief, don't just know it by, yeah, we all know life is short and I'm going to die one day. But how can you participate in the experience of you being alive? And I always say this to myself, don't be afraid of dying, but be afraid that you never truly live your life. Number two, choose love. I don't know how we become a society that we don't talk about love a lot. We downplay love, we don't talk about love, and sometimes we don't even want to feel it. But we shouldn't. And the first person that we need to consciously love is our self. Self-love is not about being in love with yourself or boost your self-importance or tell yourself how great you are. Self-love is about celebrating and embodying who you truly are, the living state of you, and to know that you are aware of love. You are, you are capable of love and love is already encoded in you. If that cell in your mother's womb knows how to grow into a human, if that is the hardware of us, then love is the software that is already encoded in us when we are born. And this is why we are so drawn to babies. Anyone here hates babies? You see baby and you're like, ugh! No, we're all drawn to babies because babies are pure love and awareness. And this is something I tell my kids. There are no bad people in this world. There are only people who are poorly loved and have forgotten that they are worthy of love. Loving yourself is the greatest revolution. Number three, courage. Courage is vulnerability in disguise. What is vulnerability? Vulnerability is you taking risk. When I got this invitation to speak here today, I was really scared because public speaking is one of my biggest fear and being recorded while you're speaking and then being on in the internet, it's like the double scare. But I decided to come anyway because there is no growth when I don't take risk. We all need to take risk. And the kind of risk, the kind of courage that I, that I am advocating is not about jumping off an aeroplane or in the show fear factor eating some weird bugs. The kind of courage that I am advocating is you telling your story wholeheartedly with authenticity and vulnerability. I'm going to share with you a very intimate story. When I was 12 years old, I was sexually assaulted. And when I told my mom this, she didn't believe me. And the 12-year-old me was so devastated and hurt that I tried to kill myself. I couldn't share this story with anyone, and I didn't want to own the story. It was only 20 years later when I was in my yoga teacher training which was like being in therapy the whole time, that I had the courage to bring this story to light, that I was able to share it with a very intimate group of people. And amazing things happened after that. It was such a liberating and empowering experience when you bring the darkest part of you into the light. So I encourage you, to dive deep, deep and courageously look at yourself. Because only when you bring the darkest part of you online that you can be unlimited.
Number four, embrace uncertainty. Uncertainty is where fear lives. We are all afraid of what we don't know because it is so uncomfortable and so confronting. But when you learn to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation, to trust that anything that happens in your life happens for a purpose, when you embrace uncertainty, you will have the superpower to be okay with anything that happens in your life. There is nothing because to learn to embrace uncertainty, there are two things that you need to know. Number one is you need to be able to unlearn everything you know. Number two is to know that life is unpredictable. So if you know that life is unpredictable, then trying to control what is going to happen in your life will just bring you pain and suffering. When you embrace uncertainty, you also learn how to trust. So I encourage you to trust the process of becoming. Because when you embrace, when you embrace, truly embrace uncertainty, when nothing is certain, anything in life can be a possibility. Number five, access your hearingness. Assessing your hearingness, it's about how can you bring yourself to the present moment. I wanted to research some scientific study about how you can, what, what are the benefits of living in the moment. So some of them include your workouts become easier, your food tastes better and you might even eat less. And number three, you may have better sex. Now who doesn't want that, right? <laughs> so accessing your hearingness is about being in the present. When we live in the past, when we're always thinking about what happened before, that's when we have resentment, we have guilt, we have regret. And if we live in the future, that's where fear and anxiety lives. So by choosing to live in the present moment, by accessing our present moment, that is when we find lightness and joy. I want to do a quick practice with everyone here. So stay with me. Take a comfortable seat, put both your feet on the floor and use your fingers and start tapping from the inside of your collarbones and tap towards outside. And then as you are tapping, close your eyes and whisper gently to yourself, I'm here. I am here. You need to close your eyes to do this. It might seem really strange in the beginning, but I promise you that you will reach a point while tapping that you will feel that all of you is here. All particles of you will arrive in your seat. I am here. I am here. So familiarize yourself with this feeling. This is the feeling of being present. Also, you don't have to be tapping during sex once you familiarize yourself with this feeling. In your living presence is also where you're, you are most creative. You can stop tapping now. You can try this at home. I recommend lots of practice. The more you practice, the more you know how to guide yourself back to the present moment. Because the goal is not to stay in the present moment forever, but the goal is to consciously, aware, with a lot of awareness, to bring yourself back to the present moment. Number six, becoming the master of your mind. You can either be a master of your mind or a slave of it. We can consciously choose the thoughts that go through our head. 
the thoughts that go through our head are not truly us because we can pick and choose. Like the exercise that we did just now. When I ask you to tap, you, you are not thinking about anything else. But I am here, I am here, I am here. So that proves that you can guide where your attention go. Now, how do you do this? A very powerful way to learn to how to be the master of your mind is learn how to meditate. Meditation is not a religious practice. Anyone can meditate. It is a very simple practice of just guiding where your attention goes. Let's do a very quick exercise again. Take a comfortable seat. Place your feet both on the ground. Close your eyes. And allow yourself to feel the point of contact where your feet meets the earth. Where your feet, whether or not you're wearing shoes, high heels, just feel where your feet meets earth. And then allow that energy from the earth to travel through your sit bones where your sit bones meets the chair. And then from where you meet the chair, allow the energy to travel up to your spine all the way to the top of your crown. Open your eyes. Can we agree that we can direct where our attention go? Your mind is your instrument. Learn to be its master and not its slave. So that is the end of my presentation. Healthy Ever After is about living a life of awareness, being awake. The opposite of that would be being asleep, like a factory, like a product of a factory, just going through the motion to get the product done. Your life is not about getting a job, get married, have kids, pay bills, and die. You're, you have a higher purpose in this life to appreciate your aliveness, to enjoy life, to be loved and to love, to live courageously and to be the master of your own life. When you find your healthy ever after, you will unlock your unlimited potential. Don't chase money, love or success. Find your healthy ever after, and those things will chase you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you.